Okay, so as I'm teaching all this material on healing family brokenness, I thought we could talk through the process a little bit because Mm -hmm. we don't have references on how to navigate healing through family brokenness and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think all of us come to a place in our life and many layers, many times in our journey where we have to come to terms at a deeper level with how our family upbringing affected us. Yeah. And this is an uncomfortable subject for a lot of people. They don't know how to navigate this. They don't have a lot of tools or references or what does it look like because all you know is what you came from. But then there comes a point in time where you're manifesting a mental health battle, addiction, emotional struggles. Um, Your marriage is going through all these different problems. Mm -hmm. A uh, big one is in your parenting. You know, you see stuff in ways that you parent and stuff like that. All these areas are calling us to understand where we came from, how it affected us. Mm-hmm. And a lot of Christians, this is a very uncomfortable subject, difficult mm-hmm. subject. Don't go there. Mm-hmm. Don't deal with it. Right. Well, because it confronts how we deal with basically everything. And then the bigger issue is once you realize all these things and how they've affected you, how do you then interact with your family? Right. Yeah. That to me, because <laughs> yes, the recognizing, okay, I wasn't equipped with this. Like there's, there's so much to that and we'll get into that of like dealing with your current situations of like maybe your marriage, your kids or whatever you're, right. you're battling with. I honestly feel like the bigger problem is how do you deal with your family then when you start to see everything? Mm. That's really good. Let's hold that for mm-hmm. a second and let's take a few steps back because okay. I think that there there comes those moments of awareness. We avoid the subject of parental brokenness. Mm-hmm. We We have sometimes glossy images of what our upbringing was. And many people that resist go, well, you're just blaming your parents. Mm-hmm. I see I see people online make these statements. You know, you're blaming your parents for everything. Mm-hmm. While that can be valid in certain people's stories where they just point the finger in shame mm-hmm. and they don't take personal recognition for their journey and their growth, I think a lot of people don't delve into being open to the understanding their healing need in this because they're afraid they're going to be blaming, disrespecting, dishonoring their family. Well, I was just going to say, I think the bigger thing is, especially in the church, would be I'm not honoring my parents. Right. But when. But we don't even know how to do that really anyway. Let's be real. Do you really know what that, like, what is that? Is that just not even asking your parents a question? Right. Like, I feel like we've taken it too far in some of these, like, reasonings in our mind. And let's be honest, it just goes down to fear. You're afraid of of. I shouldn't say confronting, but you're afraid of pressing into like maybe asking your parents a question or challenging what what happened in your home. That's true. It, it, you're afraid. It's true. It, the fear, the, uh, the discomfort is a fear yes, thing. Yes, totally. It's like with anything else. Well, hey, I have somebody awkward at work that's not being nice to me. We'll maybe talk to them. And we're like, <gasps> if we can't even do that with the people that are our family. <laughs> right. Yeah, and a lot of families um, have a nice presentation. Yeah, like we're the nice family. Yeah, that should I know be a, a lot of those. That should be a name, like you know how they say the Joneses. Yeah, we should have the nice family. Right, we're the nice family. We're nice to everyone, and then that carries on to the internal world, where there isn't a sense of, hey, this is wrong. Right. This isn't. This isn't. This isn't healthy behavior. Mm-hmm. You know. We call it dysfunction, but really, if you want to get biblical, it's like, this is sinful. Right. <laughs> and we're operating in wrong ways. Mm-hmm. Um, Let me ask you this before you go. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt your flow, but how much did it help you? Because I know for me, just even seeing, oh my gosh, my parents did not know how to emotionally deal with it. Like, wasn't that a huge thing to go, oh, my gosh. It, it was very helpful, but it took a while. Yes. It took a while. And even when I did go, okay, I've got areas that need healing, I, it, still, it still didn't hit mm. in ways of that. So there's, there's times in your journey where, like, it hits you. And it would hit me, oh, my. 
because most of mm-hmm. my life was survival in the sense of you're just adjusting and acclimating, and you don't even know what you need. You just you just adjust to what you have, mm-hmm. right? And we, you know, if you're raised in the church or if you have a God awareness, you want to be honoring. You don't right. want to be just disrespectful. But then it keeps you from going. No, that wasn't right. Yeah, that way, mom and dad's marriage wasn't great, or that that neglect over. No, that wasn't cool, or yeah. the way that we dealt with problems wasn't. So for me, I feel like I've had it in layers, mm-hmm. and it helped me to make sense of why I had many of the specific battles that I had in certain ways. It gave me an area of like, okay, those things need to be addressed and healed, and I. I th- I think if you look at the Bible, because a lot of Christians, when they look at like psychology or heart healing, they go, well, what does the Bible have to say? Well, when Jesus addressed people's lives, he went to the heart of the issue all the time, and he was always like foundational. Mm-hmm. So he said like to the church of Ephesus, go back to your first works, right? Even the whole idea of coming into the kingdom of God mm. is being born again. Start over. Right. Start from the beginning. So... Um, there's, you know, scriptures like root up, to pluck up, to, it talks about the soil, you know, the firm foundation. All these things speak of metaphors. God's work is always, as you move forward, he actually helps you go backwards. Mm. And a lot of times we think going backwards, looking back, is going back and we're losing progress. Right. Whereas going backwards helps you to move forward. For example, like the older I get, the more I have a respect and treasure for history, Mm -hmm. just general history, American history, world history. Whereas when I was a a teenager, it's like, hey, I just want to go, you know, hang out with my friends. Mm -hmm. The more you are aware, the more history is meaningful and informative to you. And I think in our families, we need to be aware of how family history has been molded. Mm -hmm. Because as we become born again, we're creating a whole, like, new pathway. So for me, it took time Mm -hmm. to realize, oh, I needed, oh, there's all these like gaping holes and areas where, but it wasn't, for me, I don't think I would have really opened myself up to the realization of that if it wasn't for the anxiety, the obsessiveness, the depression, where I was like struggling to maintain Right. My inner peace. And a lot of people, they have their battle mm-hmm. and they go, you go, so tell me about your mom and dad. Yeah, it was good. Good. We're good. So help me with that. Mm. It's like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, as you were talking, it's making me think about the realizations that I've had about this topic. And yes, and we'll get into that because you've done, and I recommend everybody go watch the videos that you, that you've done this past week. Um, the, one of the biggest points that for me on the journey of recognizing this that has jumped out is that in growing up, my family, we had all of our super dysfunction, but we were, I would say more so my sister and I are were the ones of confronting, trying to get our parents to understand our feelings. But within the, the context of that, you always felt super crazy. Like you felt super crazy and was never getting the answers and the validation that you needed. And in really seeing, okay, all the stuff that comes, that you you manifest in being raised by emotionally immature people, but even looking at all of those times of trying so hard just to get my parents to understand, relate, give me an answer, they couldn't. Because they didn't have it to, when we say, you know, we've heard a lot of people say, well, they didn't have it to give. No, they, they really don't. And you brought up a really good point about one of the signs of th- that your parents are emotionally immature is that they revert to being a child. Right. Especially in moments that are uncomfortable about emotions. Very uncomfortable. Right. That is so, that's what I, I would say more so probably with my dad and he wasn't given any language at all. Right. I, like I can talk with my mom and we have the we have whatever wh- things with her but um my dad more so. He doesn't he doesn't even have the language. Right. And in growing up with the things that he battled, 
then I would feel bad for him. Right. So then I, oh, I'm sorry, the rain. <laughs> My yeah, want, want, Let me just hit it really quick because I'm at a good point. Um, sorry, everybody. My ring up. Um, that was a big deal for me because I carried a lot of wounds around those, just almost begging him to understand me and begging to try to make our relationship. But like he, he didn't really comprehend the emotional part. So let he me, didn't let, have it to give ba- to to volley back with me. So let me take a step back for a second, and you're in, in in what you're talking about. The setup that many people have an experience is that of you as the child trying to bring illumination, yes, to dysfunction. Absolutely, wrong setup. And getting yeah, totally wrong setup. Yeah, yeah, totally that's wrong not the setup. setup. Right, the setup is. Mm-hmm. Oh, and and when I when I look at parenting, there's no such thing as perfect parents. Mm-hmm. Maybe we could call it good enough parenting, right? Or healthy parenting. It really starts with humility, and a humility brings about recognition. Humility right. opens up for awareness, right? For self awareness, right? Because it's one thing to not have it; it's another thing to go, okay, I recognize I don't have it. I humble myself to receive it so that I can, because mm-hmm. it's a parent's role. To deposit those kind of things, right? You know, in in the child's life. So right. already you're in a role that That's, you shouldn't, it's you shouldn't be in, right? Which I think, and I've seen even in our the comment section of videos that we do about these topics, people do they give the the uh, history of their parents. Like I've done that. Well, my dad was hit a lot. I mean, bad. Like of what they experienced. Yeah, yeah. He was beat. He couldn't even go to school because he he was beat. Which I feel like. What were they doing back then with the beating? <laughs> right. It's like, what? right. My right. gosh. Right. Right. It's Everyone true. got beat. Anyway, so I would then feel bad for him. Right. Well, this is why like he didn't have parents that like and it, there's a fine line with that, right? Of like going gosh, it's awful what he grew up with. But then we reverse the roles of where like I am caretaking his heart mm-hmm. over his wounds and I, that shouldn't be what's happening. Yeah, and I feel like that that perspective, oh they didn't have it, I feel bad. Yeah. I, I find it, that leading to very unproductive places. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a awful. healthy no. it's not a healthy thing to do because it is a parent's role to demonstrate empathy towards their children. Right. Now the child is having to be the grown up. Right. This is what's happening. This is why we're talking about this so much is um, it, forces the, it forces the child to have to be like in a grown-up position to try to be healthier, to convince, to convey healthier mm-hmm. mindsets. And that's, that's not... Th- right. And even what, you know, when you brought out that point, I guess I, you know, we've talked about that, but it really hit me in, wa- in re-watching the video that you did on it of when they revert to being a child and you even can see like a pouty, I'm not going to answer you. Like, oh, yeah. like you're dealing with a bratty child. And now, because of what we understand, I, I can look at it and go, okay, he's in shame, he's in this. But again, I shouldn't have to be analyzing that. Correct. I'm the, I'm the daughter. I'm the child. Mm-hmm. And when you grow up in these atmospheres, I'm sure so much of you can relate to this. It's why, you know, even understanding the narcissistic personality and, and growing up underneath that, because that does fall under that. Right. Um, it becomes very twisted. And so in unwinding even that aspect, you have to give yourself so much grace and kindness in it when you right. then are re-engaging them and seeing this and trying to not fall into that pattern. Right. Of like, right. I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna give you the emotional language. And it's like, no. They- right, because the healing journey involves, you, you don't need to go tell your parents. No, you don't need to explain so, to them. Yeah. You don't need to try to fix them. You don't need to try to explain to them. I, I don't even think you need to explain to them, especially as an adult, mm-hmm. that you need to explain to them how their parenting affected you. Right. Because unless, there's only one reason, and that is if they show safety and humility in that being able to be processed 100%. Out. 100%. And... Uh, a lot of people are taking their knowledge and understanding and trying to go back to their family with it mm-hmm. and try to explain to them or or make the decision, you know, and yeah. 
Right. It is if now if parents are reasonable and set the stage for talking through it in a in a humble way, that's that's where it can happen. Right. But I think we we take on even as kids though when the dysfunction's happening, we take on a role. And for you, you talk about you and your sister. There's where you're you're trying to you're trying to help them. Yes. So we be, we we get put in these codependent kind of positions to like. We're going to make things better. Mm -hmm. I remember sixth grade, Mm. me refereeing stuff in the family, right? Like that that consult coach counselor in me. Came out early. (laughs) Is already happening. Right. Nope. So if I was to go back in history... Like let's say I was to let's say I was to step in and referee that situation. It's like, no, Mark, this is not your issue. Right. But as a kid, in moments where you feel unsafe or you feel something disrupted, you take on these. I've must do something better. Mm-hmm. I've got to fix this. Right. Right. Um, take another tangent. There's never been, for example, an obsessive compulsive person. Mm-hmm. When I talk about their upbringing, mm-hmm. I've never met one right. where now they start off going, ah, it's a good Christian home. I talk about the good Christian home, right? <laughs> I grew up in a good home. Right. Yeah, I grew up in a good home. And then there's those, I grew up in a, a good loving home. And there's, I grew up in a good loving Christian <laughs> home. It's like this, like, ha, ah, right. everyone's standing off. Right. Right. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, good, loving Christian home. Mm-hmm. You're struggling with obsessive compulsive depression, spinning out. Now, this isn't. Mental health is not there only because of your parents. Right. There's no bullet. Right. Right. Mental health is multifaceted. But But, this is a major footing in the foundation. Major. We need your little, you need your voice. Yeah, but. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The one that's like. Uh Um, Because I feel like we can understand, we can move past this, like, we defend and deny our uh, family upbringing, right? No matter what it is, you know, it's like, uh, you know, like you can make fun of your family, but if somebody else makes a joke, like, wait, you can become defensive. But if somebody brings out dysfunction, we become defensive about it because we're. Some, I think you know. See, I go the opposite though. I'm like, let me tell you how dysfunctional <laughs> it is. There are those that some. I right. sometimes can go too far the other direction. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, in the. In the in in the process of of healing, I, I've I've never seen an obsessive compulsive where when you look at their upbringing, oh, they've really been instilled with how to <laughs> how to live in unconditional love and grace. How to like it's really been deposited. Mm-hmm. Now they're sharing their story with me, and they're thinking that what they're sharing with me is you know pockets of like well, this is really great. Mm-hmm. And, I'm, and and I'm not saying it's all bad. I'll get to right. that in a second too. <laughs> that that kind of mindset where we go all or nothing. Um, but yeah, that grid mm-hmm. for unconditional, like OCD is being repeated. They live under control. They live under obsessive kind of things. Right. They live under legalism or they live under guilt or they live under uh, alcoholism mm-hmm. or addict. And it, and it spawns this, you know, there's right. so many different. When you different... live with alcoholism too, um, there's a lot of like dumb talk. That happens like a lot of like in a drunken that messes with you too. Like hearing somebody try to talk to you drunk in an emotional state. Right. That's very traumatizing. Right. To the mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that when I would when I first started helping obsessives mm-hmm. within ten minutes, I go, Is there is there addictions in your in your home? Right. Was there addictions in your home growing up? Because I saw right away this thread of addict Mm -hmm. in the family. Right. And even if it wasn't severe alcoholism or some kind of addiction, Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, yeah, no. And then it's like, well, my dad had a hidden pornography stash. That Oh, okay. Addiction's addiction. And then... um, And then you'd see where they were manifesting a form of addiction, and it pivoted to OCD. OCD. And it's like, well, I'm not doing a drug, or maybe they are, but yeah. and, and many OCDers also have addiction issues as well. But it's just like a, there's like a common thread where the neglect and the chaos growing up affected them. Mm-hmm. The point being is, as you learn your family history, you first learn what was healthy and not healthy, 
And then you start asking, what is healthy? So that you can start renewing those areas of your mind and allow those areas to really be reparented in your life because they you got stuff, you know, stuck at stuck at, you know, and people are recognizing this more and more. Like they're stuck at 10 in a certain area, they're stuck at 12 in a certain area, they're Mm -hmm. stuck at a certain age in a particular area of their life. That's right. That's what we're talking about of the immaturity that was there. Right. Um, so anyways, I think. Tell me what you think about this. But I think in the process, when I was, I wrote down a couple thoughts. We tend to have a form of denial at first. Then we feel bad going there. Like we feel bad, like uh, she she was real harsh. She was very controlling. The story comes out. Mm-hmm. And like, wow. And if you have ears that can tune into this stuff, you go, you go this is significant mm-hmm. how this affected you. As they're sharing, there's a backpedaling that comes in. It's like, I don't want to make my mom look like she was terrible, you know, because she she was good. She, you know, she, right? Right. Guilt starts to come in and take over, and it, like, interrupts the the healing process Mm -hmm. because then we feel bad. And I feel like that we have to be aware of the guilt factor. We start going into, well, they weren't all bad or they weren't all Mm -hmm. this. They tried their best. Right. You know, and it's like. Sober healing is not is not um, is is found in being able to see it for what it is. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's like we 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 go we go out of sobriety. Right. So I wanted to throw this thought your way, but this is my opinion: is when there comes a point where it hits you, mm-hmm. oh, the trauma, the neglect. Oh my! I grew up with that my whole life. Right. Like I grew up with certain patterns. Other people were telling me, oh, that's, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, that, right. that, that's unhealthy. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah. Right. Like, whoa, it's still not here yet. Then it hits and it happens in layers. When people have that awakening, they can tend to go into seasons of black and white. Mm-hmm. We're like for a season, we're like, oh my goodness, my family's dysfunctional. My family's a mess. My right. family's just, oh my goodness, I can't believe I survived that, right? Mm-hmm. When I see someone in that, I don't try to fix it. I don't try to like modify it or balance it out mm-hmm. because we go through seasons where you need to see what you've not been seeing. Mm-hmm. And over the long haul, yeah, you'll balance it out and you can appreciate some things. You can put it in perspective. But I feel like as a part of the healing, that's normal to have that kind of pendulum swing where you're, you've been in like such a, you've been kind of patty caking in this and now whoonk, you get hit and you need to kind of let yourself reflect on that. Yeah, that's very true. Um, and I think too, a big part of that is going, oh my gosh, this is why I do what I do. That was very big for me. Looking at myself, okay, seeing everything that went on and it having moments you even you know that I've you know I've shared with you, "Oh my gosh, this is me. Oh my gosh, mm-hmm. that's how I felt growing." These, you know, the light bulb moments where you really yeah. realize that why I manifest what I manifest. And yeah, I think that's very true and I I actually commend people that go, I got to stay away for a while. And sometimes the anger is just a good righteous anger of like, Mm -hmm. no, I got to heal. And maybe you can reintroduce yourself slowly and maybe you don't. Mm -hmm. Maybe you just go, this is too much for me. Right. Either way, I have respect for it. Yeah. It's understandable. We have to give ourselves space to process pain without guilt, without shame. That is... So hard. <laughs> mm-hmm. It is, especially when you have a, I'm going to do air quotes, functioning. You do holidays, you do birthdays, there's grandkids. And you go, how do I stop all this? Mm-hmm. Without know. over-explaining right. or sitting everybody down. There's no clean way to do it, right? No there's perfect not like way a to do it. clean way. Right. There is no perfect... This looks beautiful, and I'm going to take my time, and everyone's just going to be accepting of it. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the dysfunction in family is we become pleasers to the dysfunctional world. We become codependent to it. We become um, peacekeepers to it. So when someone in the family goes, 
uh, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't think that's right. I don't think that's healthy. It creates a, a, a disruption right. in the wave of the family system. Right. We don't have to be... We don't have to be a jerk about it, but there are times where you just go, I, I, I'm walking in a new direction. Right. And um, I think the decision on how you interact with family is a spectrum. It's like, there's not really mm-hmm. like, I think the options we're given are play to the family system, try to convince your family to be better, or completely cut them off. Right. I think, I feel like those are the only options given in like the public sphere. Right. And I think it's, it's, nuance. it's nuanced and it's kind of what you're ready for. But I feel like if you get if you deal with the pleaser part, where you're like, I'm I'm really doing this because I want to keep everyone happy. When or that part gets I confronted. Don't hurt mom's feelings. Correct. I don't wanna or if you have like if you were raised by by narcs and you they're still married. Yeah. And you have the person that's codependent. We've heard, you know, we hear these stories a lot where, you know, the woman's a narc, the mom is a narcissist, and the dad is the codependent. And he's like, Correct. come on, don't do this to your mother. You know, she, and then yep. you're getting guilt by not just your dad or your brother, you know, other members right. of the family. Right. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I, I, I felt that there was a radar in my healing journey where I, where I, I realized this guilt thing. Mm hmm. I looked at the guilt and I was like, something's not right about this. Yeah. Because I was I lived by guilt. Mm-hmm. Most of my relating of is done by do. guilt. The the mindset of I feel bad. You do everything out of I feel bad. And I was like, okay, Jesus didn't do that. This isn't loving. Something at least there was a there was a there was a thought of this guilt thing is not right. And once I began applying an obsessive compulsive reaction mm-hmm. to guilt, like not feeding the compulsion that guilt brought, mm-hmm. I found it brought waves of resistance, yeah. like spinning and yeah. like I should do something, I should call. Because um, like I said, we take on roles based on the dysfunction and um, my dysfunctional role is the performer and fixer. Mm-hmm. It's not... Right. Not a great combo. Do, do, achieve, chief, you know, and then also anything wrong, I've got to fix it. Mm-hmm. So there's something I need to do. I need to make a phone call. I need to write. I need to apologize. I need to. And I think that that's God talking, but it's really the dysfunction talking that formed guilt. Because right. what people don't realize is if you if you have a like, guilty conscience, it comes out of neglect and abuse. Right. You see, you don't understand what healthy, like corrective pathways even are. Right. So you just go to guilt because it's always chasing you. Right. I remember trying to like come out of some of these patterns, and I literally felt like I was brain dead. Like, okay, I'm not going into the old thing, but when is it going to hit me where I'm going to feel? Yeah, this is right. Mm-hmm. You do go through that that very awkward stage of the in betweener of like, right. I okay, I know I don't want to do the yucky, the old yucky. I don't want to do that, but okay, I'm gonna walk through this, and it's mm-hmm. and you kind of have to go through it sometimes with just the motions and figure it out as you go, and it will eventually click, and you'll feel it, and you know what's right. But when you grew up in these atmospheres and you weren't really you weren't equipped with it. I mean, let's be real. I wasn't really equipped with anything. So mm-hmm. I go, it's been a free-for-all my whole life. And I just went with whatever I felt. Okay? I know a lot of people can relate to that. And then when you're trying to make conscious yes or no's, what's right, what's wrong, good decisions and honoring yourself, like, you think that, well, that should just come easy. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't at first. Right. It really doesn't. You're you're just like, all right, Lord, I'm going to trust that you're going to walk with me because... Mm-hmm. I'm so used to what the old feels like that even walking in the new feels like so foreign. It really does. So foreign. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we have part of like reading books or getting material is you need you need references to point to what is healthy. A hundred percent. To go, wait a second. Oh, that was neglect? Wait a second. Oh, you know, it's like the dawning of, wait, my father was supposed to tell me that he loved me. Right. I actually needed that. Mother nurture, the, you know, mother mm-hmm. mothering and, and nurture being developed. Mm-hmm. And 
a father's role. Wait, okay. Oh my. Right. You know, we need that. And then what I find, and this is kind of my recommendation to people as they're processing. For me, this is, everything's journey and everything's layers. Mm. You read a book, there's chapters. And each chapter has a theme, has something. And you're in a chapter right now. And the chapter is pointing to something that's needing to be understood. Right. Right? It's not like you got to learn everything and hurry up and get healed by tomorrow. It's never going to happen. I feel like there's themes because these layers open up as you're ready. Right. You humble yourself. You get some insight. Oh, this is how it affected me. Okay. I get that. And now it, it helps in the, the renewal process. It might be the father's love. It might be nurture. Mm. It might be learning to be loving towards yourself. It might be healing from being raised by addicts, mm -hmm. uh, healing from being raised by emotionally immature people, right. complex trauma. You know, people, oh my goodness, there's so much stuff and so many things. Just focus on what is making sense and illuminating now. Right. Pay attention to like the revelation that's there in the given moment because I used to fuss over all these things that I got to right. like work on. But when I just went, nope, it's just this. Right. It's just this, like for a season. It's just about the Father's love for me. That's right. it. That's it. And I try to read other scriptures that were on other things. And it's like, I'm not getting anything. What's going on? It's mm -hmm. like, because that's not the subject right now. Right. Or you just need to grieve a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go, okay, I'm recognized. And just be kind to yourself and let yourself right. feel it. Right. What, what would you say has been, that we haven't discussed, mm -hmm. what's been helpful for you to recognize and work through mm. things effectively beyond anything that we've already said. Is there anything you'd add to that? Honestly, I think it's been how you and I have loved each other. I think our marriage has been one of the biggest helps because if I was doing this and I, and I feel for the people that are walking it alone, um, I don't, I don't know how easy it would be if you and I weren't doing this together. Not that it's easy with you and it's I. It's not, no, <laughs> right. And we have our time, you know, we're like, I'm in a, I, I, I. Um, but I think where you have been able to show me what, how a man loves a woman, what that really looks like and watching you heal those things in yourself. And then we give that between each other has been that that piece that has helped a lot of it land. Because I think if I was just trying to practice this out without, and, and maybe it's not just a spouse, maybe it's um, a friend. Um, did the camera go out? Forgive us, everyone. We had a little bit of a glitch <laughs> just in there. the camera. It, something timed Sorry, out. We're like we're like in a coma. She what was she, was she was making a great point. Then I glanced over and realized. Whoa. So did it record? Did everybody hear? Because I thought what I had to say was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was too, and I think I think it's important um, that you find actually. He, okay, here's, my point is having someone. I know you want to say something too. Um, just one thing, which was, um, and I think you're actually just going to say this. It does seem like it's helpful if you have one person. Yes, that's what it doesn't I was have say. to be a spouse because no. many people don't yeah, have that. that. It it can be just one friend mm -hmm. who you feel like, hey, I can just share this with you, and yeah. you don't get judgment, you don't get like fix it, you just get safety. Safety is love, and safety is huge when you're coming out of this. And if you it's can't, like if you and you if you say you can't find that. Go pay, pay some, someone. Go yep. pay someone. I was going to say that. And people yes. people get depressed hearing that. Um, I'll tell you many times in my journey, I haven't been able to find it in certain areas of my life. Yeah. I have to go pay someone to go listen. These are some things I need to work through and process through. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say today mm -hmm. you see your family dynamics you grew up with way differently than you did 10 years ago? Oh, yes. Um, like how much, like, like describe oh in size. Cause I would say <laughs> oh for me, goodness. it's almost night and day. Yes. The illumination. Absolutely. Because it's layers, mm -hmm. right? I said 10 years, not like necessarily like yesterday. Right. You look back and then you look, you know, in marriage and parenting, mm -hmm. parenting brings out your own history. Right. And, 
it, 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 it in many ways forces you to go, this is stuff I got to work on. Yeah, because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at patterns, too. You can say, you know what? I grew up with an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. There's deeper things here. How it affected you. The lack of equipping. Were you parenting that? There are deeper layers here to how this manifested in your life that need exploring and understanding so that you can go to the, your next level of yep, healing. Yeah, And pay attention to what is evident to you right now. Don't get overwhelmed with all the different subjects that are out there. And park right. yourself there and learn. And, and let yourself heal. It might be through journaling. It might be through uh, a one-on-one -on -one where you're processing it out. But be patient with your process because this is... A yeah. journey. If you're wanting a deeper experience of the heart, I do recommend the Heart Healing Journey book. Mm -hmm. This is a great way to dive into uh, awakening, healing, and transformation for your journey. And there's some great aspects where it gets into the father wounds and mother wounds uh, in uh, towards the later on portions of the book. Mm -hmm. And it gets into emotions and some other areas to help you navigate some of the healing experience that's needed for your life and for your journey. If this conversation was helpful for you and, and a blessing, would you consider supporting the broadcast with a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter? It'd be a great help to us, a real blessing. And we're just glad to be a sister and a brother to you and mm -hmm. what you're processing. So I think that's uh, all we have for today, right? I, I, you know what? I think we just summed it all up. <laughs> <laughs> so Lord willing. And the creek don't rise. This is a brother from another mother. And a sister from another mister. <laughs> We're out and we'll yes. see you next time. Thank you everyone. God bless.